you for tuning in to today's program. My name is Nigel Spade and I am the Adult Services Librarian at the Wilson County Public Library. And today, this program is all about women because today is Women's History Month. And our, the title of the program is called Women in Food. And I'm going to highlight some of the women from the past and the present who are known to be um, amazing chefs that have done wonderful things in the cooking industry. And after that, I'm going to cook a savory dish and a sweet dish. So my savory dish, in case you're wondering, I don't want to keep you waiting too long, is going to be shrimp etouffee. Uh, for those who have been to New Orleans or from New Orleans, you know that's a famous New Orleans dish. My grandmother and her family are from New Orleans, so th this food, their food is, is something that I just love to eat. Um, unfortunately, I, I wish that I could get it more often, but I'm here in North Carolina, so you know, whenever I'm able to go to New Orleans, that's one of my go-to meals, shrimp etouffee. And actually, this is going to be my first time making it, so I'm really excited about it. And my dessert for today is going to, um, it's honey crunch pecan pie. So for all you pecan lovers or pecan pie lovers, um, this is going to be a twist because there's honey in it. I've never heard of honey crunch pecan pie. Um, maybe some of y'all have ha heard of it or had it. So if so, um, I hope you enjoy watching me make the pie. Um, so I'm going to highlight some of the women who have done amazing things in cooking. So our first a woman who um, was in the food in industry, you may or may not have heard of her. Her name was Amelia Simmons, and she wrote the first American cookbook called American Cookery in 1796. And what was unique about her cookbook was that it relied on, on ingredients that were readily available to settlers in the New World. So, you know, during that time period, the, col the colonists moved to the America, and um, and that was an actually that was when her book was published. That was after uh, the Revolutionary War. So by that time, America um, was finally a nation, and the colonists were finally settling in their new home during that time. So she was the first to, woman to publish an American cookbook. Really interesting. And cool. So our second woman is Franny Farmer and she started her career as a student at the Boston Cooking School where she excelled as a student. Uh, she eventually served as a school's director before leaving to open her own culinary school. Among her many contributions to American cooking she studied the connection between food and good health. Uh, Farmer also created a standard for measurement by inventing measuring cups, which I'll be using, of course, um, and spoons allowing for uh, more consistent preparation in cooking and baking. And the Boston Cooking School Cookbook, uh, which came out in 1896, um, now the Franny Farmer Cookbook, has never gone out of print. So way to go for her. So our third one, most of y'all familiar with this one, our 20th century um, woman cook. Um, Julia Child um, brought the classic French style into her everyday homes of American cooks. Her popular TV show demonstrated the finer points of French cooking uh, and cuisine, but in a more casual, everyday manner. Her enorm enormously popular cookbook, The Joy of Cooking, has become a staple for our home, for home cooks. Uh, Julia Child taught our audience that we didn't need to go out to a fancy restaurant. You can enjoy an elegant restaurant quality food right in your own home. And um, like I said, um, she's one of the famous ones of the 20th century. And there was there even a movie made, uh, uh, the movie made about her. I think um, uh, Meryl Streep played her. So if you haven't seen that movie, check it out. I haven't seen it either. So why am I telling y'all? I need to check it out myself, right? <laughs> Okay, next one, number four, Edna Lewis. So Edna, Edna Lewis has been regarded in some circles 
as the grand dame of Southern cooking. She was, she was the first person to win the inaugural James Beard Living Legend Award in 1995 for her contributions to American Southern food. In addition to her own restaurant, she also wrote several cookbooks, including The Taste of Country Cooking and The Gift of Southern Cooking with Scott Peacock. The next one, you may have heard of this one, especially if you've been to her restaurant. Ruth, Ruth Fertel was the founder of Ruth's Chris Steakhouse, was a single mother who took the risky initiative to open up her own restaurant in New Orleans in 1965. She learned the ins and outs of being a restaurant owner. She was an advocate for women as entrepreneurs and business owners. Today, Ruth's Chris Steakhouse is an international franchise and Bertel's Charitable Foundation continues to support kids and the culinary arts in Louisiana. And by the way, that's a great restaurant. There's one in Raleigh. I love the food. I highly recommend you check it out if you haven't been there. Good food. So next, uh, number six, Christetta Comerford is the first woman to serve as the White House executive chef and has continued in this role since being hired in 2005. Her passion, creativity, and emphasis on healthy eating are characteristics embodied in her food. She has decades of fine culinary experience as a part of her training and brings her and brings that to her service in the White House. Number seven, last, last but not least, Alice Water, uh, Walters is the owner of Shea Penny's and the first woman to win the James Beard Award for Outstanding Chef. She had no formal training in French cuisine, but took her passion for cooking and organic food and turned it into an award-winning restaurant, Shea Pen Penny's. She's also known for her organic food pan project called the Edible Schoolyard Project a food education program that teaches kids about how to grow, cook, and enjoy he healthy, organic foods all while serving the community. So that is all the women that I'm gonna highlight today. There's so many others, but we don't have time to highlight all of them and we'd be here for days. So, <laughs> so now for the fun part, we're gonna get into making shrimp etouffee. Hello again, and I'm getting ready to make shrimp etouffee. Now before I get started, I just wanna let you know that I went ahead and made a pot of rice because it's traditionally made, shrimp etouffee is traditionally made with rice. So depending on how much rice you want, the measuring um, will be different. So I did three cups of rice and about five cups of water, and I waited to I put it on a high way to it boils and then I put it on low and then I let it um, simmer for about 20 minutes and then it's done. So shrimp is effect. So the first thing I'm going to do, as you can see, I already have my stuff measured. Everything is sliced, diced, ready to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sa saute the onions, the celery, and the green pepper. And for this recipe, you want a quarter cup of onion a quarter cup of chopped celery, quarter cup of chopped onion, and a quarter cup, a quarter cup of chopped green bell pepper. So I have our, I have all that measured and chopped. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the skillet along with butter and oil. So for the butter, you want three tablespoons, and um, with vegetable oil, three tablespoons as well. So, let me go ahead and add pepper, the celery, okay. And I would, this doesn't give like um, how high you should turn the heat, so I'll say maybe depending on your dial, maybe two or four, about medium heat. And let's see, let's see let's. Right, then the oil. Go 
go ahead and I think this is the dial. I think. Let's see. Okay. Just want to make sure that was the right dial for the burner. Okay. And three tablespoons of butter. All right. So we're going to get this sauteed. Let's see. Let's turn it. So we want our vegetables to get soft. We don't want them crunchy. So that's why we saute it. Let's see. Get the butter. Okay, I think it's been about two minutes. So now I'm going to add the garlic powder. So you want, let's see, garlic powder, where is it? One tablespoon of garlic powder and you want one tablespoon of cayenne pepper, uh, one tablespoon, excuse me, two tablespoons of seasoned salt and two tablespoons of paprika. So I can have those seasons measured in this little bowl, if you want to call it, little, a little bowl, cup. And I'm gonna dump it all in there. Ooh. Turn the heat down just a little bit. Add all that in there. Yum. That cayenne pepper is just strong. <laughs> it smells good. Ooh. All right. Okay, so we're gonna add the shrimp. Let's go ahead and add the shrimp. So for the shrimp, you want two pounds of shrimp. So that's 16 to 20 per pound. So we're gonna add both in here. The, the, the cayenne pepper go on my nose. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> All right. All right. Make sure the, the shrimp is covered in the sauce. Some of them are stuck together, so I'm trying to okay. All 
the shrimp can be frozen or um, or not frozen if you're just picking it up at your local seafood market. Um, that just got frozen. All right. Let me stir that. All right. So then this is sauteed for 30 seconds. I probably already did that. <laughs> I just, okay. Ooh. I'm getting hot. I don't know if it's hot in this room or, or it's the cayenne pepper. <laughs> All right, it's looking good. So now, Let's see here. We're going to stir in the flour. And then we're going to cook for four minutes. So let's go ahead and do that now. So turn it up just a little bit. All right. So for the flour, you want three fourths cups of all purpose flour. So I'm going to take my quarter cup. Measure three times. Okay. That's one. Right. Okay, so for four minutes. Okay, so that's about five, six, three, sixteen. Let's stir this. See the sauce, it's getting thick because of the flour. So we're gonna go ahead and put in, this is as seafood stock. Now, I will say, I was looking for it, I couldn't find it, I, I searched two stores, couldn't find it. So, instead of seafood stock, I'm using vegetable stock. So for all of you from New Orleans, if I just commit a sin by using vegetable stock, please forgive me, okay? <laughs> Especially my family from there. But I, sometimes you have to improvise, right? Okay, so so we're going to do, what is it, where is it? Three cups. So we're going to do one. And 
All right, three cups of the vegetable stock. It's looking good. The shrimp are looking pink. That's what we want. It wanted to look that way. All right. Just stirring the salt. It looks really good. All right. Okay. I just want to. Mix all that. Get that going. All right. Okay. Just make sure it looks good. All right. I think it looks good. So now, okay. At so we're gonna we're gonna let this simmer for fifteen minutes. So let's see. So we're gonna just go ahead, turn the heat just a little down low. And we're gonna let it simmer 15 minutes and then I'll finish it up after. All right, so it's been 15 minutes and it has simmered and it's looking really good. You see the sauce is starting to thicken a little bit. The shrimp are looking pink. It's just, it's just looking good. All right, so now, it says add cream sherry. Well, couldn't find the cream sherry. So like I said, we're gonna have to modify a little bit, improvise. So instead of sherry, I have Marsala cooking wine that I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna uh, measure a half a cup of Marsala cooking wine. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this. Usually I just use the dry ingredients to measure my wet. <laughs> But I'm going to use this today. I'm going to use this to measure my cooking wine. So I, what did I say? I said a half a cup. So we're going to measure a half a cup. Perfect. And we're going to pour that in here. Excellent. Stir it again. All right, now we're gonna simmer this for 30 minutes and then this will be done. All right, so next I'm going to make the honey crunch pecan pie. So um, before I get started, just wanna let you let y'all know that you need a unbaked nine inch single crust pie. So it doesn't matter the, the brand as long as it's unbaked in nine inches. So now for the filling. So first, I'm going to combine the eggs. And you need four eggs lightly beaten. So I've already cracked my eggs. And I'm going to put it in the bowl. All right. Then I'm going to lightly beaten the eggs. All right, so next I'm gonna add the brown sugar and you need a quarter cup of that, of brown sugar. Sorry, um, measured my brown sugar. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump it in here. Okay, so right. now I'm gonna measure a quarter cup of granulated, granulated sugar. Next, I'm going to put in the salt. So we need a half a teaspoon of salt. OK. 
Okay. All right. Next, I'm going to add one cup of light corn syrup. All the corn syrup out. Next, I'm gonna um, pour two tablespoons of melted butter. Right. Next, it says bourbon, but we can't use the bourbon. This is an alcohol-free dessert. I know. Rules are the rules. Can't use the alcohol. I know. But we have rum, rum extract, which is just as good. It's just as good. For those of you that are frowning that I'm using this, it's just as good. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to use one tablespoon of rum extract. All right, perfect. So I'm going to add one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Ooh, okay. Perfect. Alright, next. Uh, oh, and the nuts. So we're going to add, where's it? One cup of chopped nuts. So let's see. Okay, so this bag contains about one and a half, one and a half cups. So we just want one cup. So we're gonna measure a cup of nuts. Let's go ahead and put that in there. All right, perfect. Add that. Ooh, some of the nuts got stuck. From the corn syrup. Okay, get all those nuts out. Perfect. Okay, all right. So we're gonna mix well. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. So we're gonna mix well now. All those ingredients. Mix together. All right, looking good. Getting thick. All right. Oh, <laughs> you can't just. Rip. All right. Um. Okay. Mix well, then spoon into the unbaked pie shell. So we're gonna spoon it. Let me. All right, try not to make a mess, if that's possible when you're cooking. <laughs> Let's see, all right, just spoon it into the pie shell. Ooh, yum, look at that, looks really good. All right, put that in there, looks really, really good. All right. Okay. All right. So now um, we're going to bake for 20 minutes and then we're going to remove from the oven and then I'm going to make the topping and then we're going to put it back in the oven. Okay. So we just took our honey crunch pecan pie out of the oven and it went in for about uh 15 minutes 
So now we're going to make the topping. So first, we are going to combine the brown sugar. So you need um, one third cup of brown sugar, and I already have that measured. So I'm going to go ahead and dump that in this pot. Next, we're going to add butter. So we need three tablespoons of butter. And I have that measured. So I'm going to put this, the ball this in here. Let's go ahead and, uh, I think it's this burner. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, so add the butter. And then, and the honey. So we're going to measure three tablespoons of honey. All right, and three. Let's see. Go ahead and get that honey out. All right. I think we're good there. All right. Now, so now we're going to Cook about two minutes or until the sugar dissolves. We're, go we're going to cook it for two minutes and wait until the sugar dissolves. All right, so sugar, the sugar is dissolved. Now we're going to add the nuts. So we're going to add one and a half cups of pecan halves. I've got my pecan halves right here. Pecan down. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, two pecans down. All right. So one cup. Now we're gonna add the half. All right. Okay. All righty. Then we're going to. Stir until coated, and then we're gonna spoon evenly, evenly over the pie, and then we're gonna put it back in the oven for about 10 to 20 minutes or until the top is bubbling and golden brown. Okay, well, I just wanna say thank you so much for tuning in to today's program. And before I sign off, I just wanted to show you where I got uh, my two recipes from. And this is a book that you can check out at the Wilson County Public Library. It's called The Black Family Reunion Cookbook. And they have all different kinds of recipes from um, chitlins to um, I think apple pie and uh, banana pudding, uh, all southern food. So uh, please check it, check it out at in the adult service section where we have all our nonfiction books and please check out our other cookbooks we have baking uh southern cooking um healthy eating you name it we got it so please check out uh those books and also make sure to check out our facebook page and instagram page for our uh, upcoming events again thank you so much for tuning in and i'll see you next time